Okay, so let's take a look at this 486 machine that I got from eBay from a guy named uh, Manfred in Germany. So he said that the machine won't boot and it's probably the CMOS battery that is dead. So I thought I should share this video for some retro computing fun. So let's start with some unboxing and hopefully a good uh, restoration of this machine later on. So the packaging was very well done. A lot of plastic there. And this is the machine, ICL Ergo Pro. A 486, 33 MHz. You can see that it's pretty yellow in the front and let's see on the back okay yeah we have a comp port one and two it's manufactured in 93 there's a parallel port mouse port keyboard vga and a network card and it's made in finland this computer. Let's open it up and see. It looks pretty clean. You immediately see this Intel overdrive socket there. Yeah, down in the right corner there. Let's remove the network card to be able to see more of this, of the motherboard. So yeah, the CPU itself seems to be under some kind of cover there. There we see that the CMOS clock is inside that Dallas real-time clock chip there. That probably has a dead battery inside. And ICL is International Computers Limited, a British company that uh, bought Nokia Data in 91. So yeah, this computer is made in Finland. And it's from 93 so maybe it has some Nokia heritage I don't know so there was no hard drive included in this uh, computer but uh, there was a floppy drive but as the seller said it won't boot from the floppy so I start to just dust dust it off just because I want to. So you can see some green patch cable there be between the ships. Then. Yeah, let's remove that riser card to see better. Yeah, here we see the Dallas ship has a dead battery and also this this green cable that goes on top of the motherboard seems like some kind of patch Okay, just some cleaning here, just to, just because I can. And let's try to power it on for the first time, see what happens. Oh, 
Okay, so it says memory size not correct and no battery for CMOS clock RAM. Press any key to enter setup mode. Okay, so yeah, at least it starts, but it will not boot from uh, floppy, it seems. So let's enter BIOS. You can see that the time is at the 1980 up in the top right corner. So the it doesn't remember that the actual time or date. And I had some problem here with the with the up and down keys and uh, yeah with the cursor keys. But for some reason the numpad keys work better to navigate in these menus. I don't know, this only happened here at first. I don't know if the connector was, if I didn't put it in correctly. So I will try to enter the date and the time. 2021, July 17th. And the time. Okay, so in the top right corner, the time and date is set now. And let's see how to exit this BIOS. Okay, so yeah, it has a floppy drive, 1.44 megabytes, keyboard, install, the hard disk 0 and hard disk 1 is set to none. Floppy controller enabled. There is some kind of server mode setting there. This module settings, I don't know what this is. Seems to be some kind of uh, power on self test thing, I don't know. And Ethernet is not, I disconnected the, I removed the network card so it's not found. Okay, and here we see 486 SX, 33 megahertz. So update parameter memory and exit. And let's see if it remembers the time and the date after a reboot. Um, no battery for CMOS clock, so probably not. Let's see, I insert a floppy disk there. And uh, no, the date is back to 1980. So the CMOS battery is dead and it's the Dallas ship that is has to be replaced or reworked. Let's see if it can boot from floppy, no. No. You can only get into the BIOS settings. So, we need to replace this ship. And unfortunately it's not put in a socket. It's soldered onto the motherboard. So we have to remove that chip from the motherboard. And I have uh, got, I got a socket there that I can use. So let's 
so this is uh, desoldering <laughs> and I'm not an expert on this so yeah for me this took like two hours with uh, yeah I thought I broke the motherboard because yeah I don't know uh, it's very tricky to do this if you're not an expert so yeah I used that uh, desoldering thing and also this uh, wire yeah and finally after a lot of work I could actually try to pull the the Dallas ship out like so and yeah it looked pretty good to me no, not the ship but the motherboard itself that one is destroyed so in this case I would like to put in a socket so it's possible to replace that ship in the future so I got this new Dallas ship DS12887 plus manufactured in 2021 so this this should be working for a couple of years I guess and I, I have done this rework, it's possible to replace or to drill into that chip and put a battery in it, a coin cell battery, but I won't do this for this computer. So let's try to start the computer and let's see, bad CMOS run, so and you see the date, 2055 now, the time is 55AB. So I will set the date. And time and see if the computer remember it this time so now it's August 8th and let's reboot and yeah actually it seems to remember the date but now I have a boot failure because I didn't specify what to boot from and this took like an hour to find how to enter the BIOS in that state <laughs> and I replaced the uh, clock the CMOS clock ship and I removed RAM and everything to find out but yeah finally I got into the BIOS and now I set the floppy drive to 1.44 megabytes and also the yeah there the boot medium one is set now that wasn't set before so this is the first attempt to boot from this boot from floppy now that it has a ship a clock ship that works so insert a dos dos floppy and let's see the drive is spinning and working and yes starting ms dos so this worked yeah nice so the motherboard i didn't break it and it works so now i uh, insert an sd card reader instead of a hard drive that's very useful and let's see if the machine can detect this so power on and the LED is lit there and insert is the key to enter the BIOS settings the time is and date is is correct still and the hard disk zero is none but I set it to auto now it hopefully detects this uh, SD card reader so let's see so this, now I'm booting from a floppy drive again
Let's see if F disk sees the hard drive. So display partition information, and yes, there is a SD card there. So um, let's try to boot from that SD card. I don't really know what's on it. So let's just give it a try. Read error while reading drive. Okay, so that SD card is yeah probably not useful. So I boot from the floppy again and uh, let's see there are no partitions. I deleted them outside of this video. So let's create the partition and okay it needs to reboot again. Starting from floppy. And let's format the SD card. Format C colon with the slash S to transfer the operating system. So proceed with format. 500 megabytes and because it's an SD card it goes very fast so remove the floppy disk and reboot and it seems to be working so yeah boots from floppy and from hard drive nice So let's uh, transfer some files from the floppy drive and run uh, Microsoft Diagnostics. So yeah, th this will take a while. We can just enjoy the copying. Okay, so Microsoft Diagnostics, let's see. So the computer is detected as an IBM, but it's an ICL computer. ROM BIOS version 33, this is the memory. The VGA series logic, graphics card. OS version MS-DOS, yes. The mouse is not detected, other adapters not detected. The A colon, C colon drives are detected. Parallel port, two COM ports. Uh, Windows not detected, IRQ status. And TSR programs, device drivers. Okay, everything seems fine. ROM BIOS strings are, are interesting to look at. Yep, and a video ROM BIOS, serious logic, yep. Okay, so I also got a sound card for this computer, ISA bus. So I thought I should install that as well to be able to play some games. So this card is an ESS audio drive, ES1869F, yeah, it's not visible, yeah, okay. And yeah, it's a Sound Blaster Pro compatible card. And I have never tried it before, but yeah, 
hopefully it works. I read some reviews that yeah, it should work for most games. So that sound card needs some drivers and now with the SD card it's very easy to transfer those drivers yeah, using the SD card from my other computer, more modern one. So the drivers has been, have been transferred to the SD card and let's see, I have them here. ESSconfig.zip is the, the driver package, I guess, and I unzip it, and then ESSconfig, and yeah, it detected the card, found at address 220, IRQ channel setting is 5, DMA channel setting is 1. MPU 401 base address is 300 joystick is enabled so let's see if Microsoft Diagnostics can see this card somehow and uh, the IRQ 5 is LPT2 so yeah now it's not sort of detected but the game adapter is detected so yeah the sound card is there. Let's see. Set. Yeah, the blaster variable is set automatically by this ESS driver program, so that's good. And I start by testing the MIDI output. And unfortunately, I didn't capture the sound here, so. I can tell you that it worked. So that's good. Let's run some diagnostics. Norton Sysinfo 46SX33 MHz. IRQ5, which is the sound card, is still presented as LPT2. The CMOS battery is fine and the CPU speed is 71.9. It's a bit faster than compared to the Intel 486DX33. And the disk speed, well it's not that interesting with an SD card but yeah, it's the performance is good. 2.6 megabytes per second. It outperforms the, the best hard drive at that time. So let's try game, pinball, fantasy. This is one of my favorite games because it works on a 386 or 486 without yeah, any problems. And again, the sound works, but unfortunately I didn't capture it, so yeah, uh, we can enjoy the video. So I also had uh, Windows 3.11 on that SD card and I tried the MIDI, MIDI output and yeah, it worked fine. So let's do something about this yellow plastic cover. So this is by uh, hints from 
RMC, Neil, Retroman Cave, and LGR. I start by cleaning the computer like this. That's a metal case, so I just yeah clean it. And that's the logo and the plastic. Yeah, it's really yellow. And there were some dirt stains and glue on it. So yeah, start by cleaning it like that and let it dry. This is how it looks. So uh, I try to use this uh, baking powder, bakpulver in Swedish. Uh, and I think I did it wrong at least <laughs> like this because I think you need more water or something because this was just yeah I don't know I, I tried to <laughs> rub it in like this and not much happened with the stains yeah uh, this was probably not how to do it so I uh, Tried with a little bit more water like this on the metal case. And this is probably more like how you should do it. Because now you can see the baking powder is sort of bubbling. I will do a close up on that one. So let's see. Yeah, so this should probably lift some stains out of the plastic or metal or whatever, but yeah, uh, it sort of worked. I don't know. I'm probably not gonna do that. I, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, so the plastic is still yellow, so uh, I will do this hydrogen peroxide bleaching thing. So I got some hair bleach. And this is how to mix it up. And yeah, that uh, it's better if you open that uh, tube before you try to pour it in. And yeah, so this is uh, my attempt here is to as seen on the internet, I put some uh, plastic around the thing that I will bleach. And then on with the hydrogen peroxide and uh, rub it in like so. And uh, make sure to have a thick even layer and uh, yeah rub it in and then wrap it in plastic Okay, so cover it all in this plastic film. Like so, and then place it in the sun. And yeah, this is how, this is how it looks. And then you can massage it a bit every now and then and make sure it doesn't dry. So, this is actually three hours later, I have been out like every half hour to massage the thing in and uh, yeah. So, the moment of truth, let's see how it goes. I had to go up early in the morning to do this because the sun is not up uh, very long now, <laughs> I don't know. There, 
there are rainy days and uh, yeah but the result looks very good look at this it's almost as new it's uh, I'm really happy with the result so bring back the button the power on button there and the logo and yeah and if you look at the metal case the color is pretty much the same and the back side and the front side is yeah looks very good the yellow is sort of gone There was a little plastic, yeah, some sort of label that you should insert like this. And the color of that label is, yeah, <laughs> still a little bit yellow, but yeah, I keep it like that. So this is the result when everything is back in place and it looks very nice. The color of the floppy drive and the front of the case they are now the same and compared to the IBM computers to the right you can see that it's much more uh, white sort of so let's start it up and uh, try another game and uh, I'm going to leave you here with the Formula One Grand Prix, the intro. So 